Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to our school committee meeting. Will you please uh, join me in saluting the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Great, thank you. Um, the mayor cannot attend. He's at an opium uh, event with the governor, so he sends his regrets. Hearing of visitors. Anyone sign up? No. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Um, first item on the agenda is the consent agenda. It's where we bundle routine business, and it's the opportunity for the school committee to pull any one particular item out to discuss. Anyone on the committee wish to uh, remove an item? No? Um, I do see a couple of scholarships. Madam Superintendent, would you like to comment on the two scholarships? Uh, I will. Uh, the first scholarship uh, is from uh, Education First Scholarship. It's uh, $3,000 uh, to the first place recipient and $1,000 to the uh, running up, uh, excuse me, runner up. And the eligibility requirements are they must be a senior graduating from Brockton High School, uh, complete an essay. So as always, we're so pleased uh, to receive uh, these scholarships for our students. And, and the second one is a little more personal to me, and I'm sure a number of you uh, around the table here, is in honor of Richard J. Sergi, uh, Dick Sergi, many of you know, uh, started out uh, teaching in the Brockton Public Schools. I worked with him many years ago when he was the department head of social studies at, at the time, North Junior High. He went on to become the executive director of the Brockton Housing Authority. He always cared about children, certainly our families and the community. So we're very pleased uh, that the scholarship is in the amount of $1,000 to be awarded uh, to a Brockton resident, a uh, high school graduate, accepted at a community college or university. Wonderful. Okay. Why don't we have a motion to approve all of the items A through G? Second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Great. Okay, we have a communication from uh, Mr. McGeary. Is that uh, the Elections Commission request? Yes. Okay. Uh, I believe this is for uh, the next year, and yeah. this will cover all of the elections. Um, as you know, Mr. McGeary works very closely with us. We have made some improvement in the, in the polling places where uh, a number of times school has been in session, depending on if it's a primary or a general election. Um, and uh, I just I recommend that you approve the uh, polling places for this uh, calendar year. Just one additional note, there will be a special election and I believe that would be for the rep seat um, on February 2nd, 2016. Three polling locations are requested and um, so that would be the... Uh, seat vacated by M Representative Michael Brady. Correct. Now Senator Brady. Yes, exactly. So. Um, Okay, can we have a motion to approve? Mrs. Joyce. We normally do, and we would consider that when we do the. Um, it'll be that, when that'll, we do be, the calendar that'll be the spring. calendar that we'll discuss one in May. Is that when we usually do it? April, May? We start in April for the first yeah. meeting, I think. Yeah, so we definitely, I believe, will. Oh, okay. yes. yeah. Right. But not for the one on February 2nd, correct? Correct. It's only, it's only three okay. schools. And it's a smaller election. Yeah. It's not a, you know, a, a presidential. So. Okay, thank you. Mr. Jordan? I can make the motion to get the action vacant. Yep, okay. Move to accept the uh, request from the Election Commission for the use of the schools, uh, including the 2nd of uh, February. Okay, a second? Thanks, Ray. Um, any further discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Okay, great. Okay, um, next item. Report of Superintendent of Schools. The learning and teaching report. Um, I know I have to be very quick this evening, so a couple of things I would like to share. Um, we are very, very pleased, and we talked about this at a subcommittee meeting, but certainly the information was embargoed. 
So we did get the results back from Park, and I will say, uh, Dr. Cancel cautions me all the time. It is a work in progress from going from MCAS to Park and looking at uh, the data, but we are very, very pleased for the first time, certainly in our district, we have two level one schools. And as far as I'm concerned, this should have been top news. Um, East Middle School uh, over on the east side of Brockton. I taught there for many years. I'm always proud to go back and visit. Uh, a lot of hard work with our leadership team there, uh, Dr. Silver and her team. We couldn't be prouder of the work that has been done there. And also I had the opportunity to go to uh, the Kennedy School, had their professional development day on Thursday when the embargo was lifted. And uh, Brian Rogan, the principal Rogan uh, at the school, unveiled it to the teachers. And again, you could just see on their faces how pleased they were for the students, for the families, and all the hard work. We have two level one schools in a large urban district. Um, I'd like to see all schools level one schools. Uh, we do have quite a few level two schools. Uh, and we're pleased with all our schools because I think we all understand, you know, we have a lot of challenges in this district but our students certainly continue to rise to the occasion. Our teachers are dedicated and continue to defy our demographics. So we will be doing a presentation after the first of the year and you'll be able to see what our challenges are. We're bringing leadership teams in. We're talking about those best practices and hopefully we can take a look at that as we prepare for budget season. That's important. So that's my update there. And I do want to tell you under, you see the district safety and security. Uh, we all know that, and, and as you look around the country, this continues to happen, that there are threats and it, it's become difficult when you're talking about social media and the way information travels, whether threats that come before us are credible. But I will have to tell you that we dealt with uh, a threat at Brockton High School, was not a credible threat. Uh, we actually found a student that had hacked into another student's Facebook account. There were very serious consequences for what happens. Uh, and what I want to bring to your attention is on Friday up at Brockton High School, we brought every single class into the auditorium starting with the freshmen. Principal Wolder addressed the students and you could hear a pin drop. She spoke to them again about what their responsibility is in all of this because they certainly are part of the solution for us. They see things that could happen. They need to make us aware. Um, I was there, I addressed the group, uh, Deputy Superintendent Thomas, who we were very fortunate, was on uh, Governor Deval Patrick's Safety Commission. We talked to the students about the training, that our teachers will keep them safe, that we all need to work together. And also Lieutenant Mills spoke to our students, as did the big hit of the night was Officer Clifford, our school resource officer. They loved him. Uh, it goes to show the relationships that they develop in middle school. Uh, he was a coach for a lot of the students. His son is actually a senior at the high school. So very pleased with the presentation for every single class. As I said, the students were attentive. And again, ma they make me proud every time I see what they actually do. I want to thank uh, Principal Wolder for putting this together. And I think it will be very effective as we move forward. I also want to say to the parents that we are looking at having a parent meeting on January 19th. I will be addressing it with the new school committee members. It is a school committee night. I'm proposing to have the parents in the auditorium between 6.30 and 7.30, where we'll address them with some of the th same things we shared with our students, and we'll open this up to the district. We'll answer questions, and then hopefully start the meeting at 7.30 on that evening. So we figure it would be an, about an hour with our parents. So we will get word out there, and we will share that with them. Mr. Jordan. Yes, that's going to bring you something. Now. Um, seems to be an inordinate amount of inappropriate behavior happening throughout the system, unfortunately. And of course, around the country, we're having that. And see that the principal at the high school already took care of that particular building. If it's possible, could we do the same with the rest of our uh, buildings as quickly as possible? I know that's a lot of work, but given what's been happening, um, seems like we've been getting reports on a regular basis that behavior is not acceptable within the system. So a reminder of some kind, however you will decide to do that. 
uh, throughout the whole system so that all the children in the system know what's appropriate to do within the school system as a whole. One of the things, Mr. Jordan, and, and I think you make a good point, that we continually need to speak to our students. You know, they're part of our Brockton Public School family. I think when you look at the ages of students, we weren't even sure this was going to make sense to bring over a thousand students into that auditorium. And I'm telling you, it was a big success. And I'm very, very pleased with, with the attention. Um, I hope that your students, that have students here, went home and spoke to you. Uh, I asked Mr. Minicello, and can I share what your son said? Sure. Basically, he said, you know what, what we heard today was really common sense. When you talk about the young students, and, and Principal Wolder also mentioned to me, as we go forward, one of the great assets we have is our teacher in the classrooms who connects to these students every day. Having those discussions in small groups about behavior, how we support each other. So when you're talking young students in elementary or middle school, I'll certainly talk to the executive directors, the deputy superintendents, and we'll come up with a plan, probably in smaller groups, maybe come up with a, a kind of a, you know, targeted points that we want to share depending on the age and the appropriateness for those students. But again, it was a big success. Right. And we uh, have uh, the district capacity project that when I became superintendent so very long ago, I believe that was one of the first groups that I started to work with, and it was a project already in progress. Time flies when you're having fun. Time flies when you're having fun, that's correct. So I believe they have a presentation for us this evening, and Kelly Jones and Kim Gibson are going to lead us off. Is there a PowerPoint? There is. Okay. I don't go anywhere without a PowerPoint. Now, will you be introducing <laughs> it, or would you like me to? I think I'll hand it over to you. Okay. Is that PowerPoints, Kelly? Ready? Yep. Let's go. Good evening, everyone. So this is going to be a quick update for you concerning your, this is one of your last meetings. We wanted to make sure you were updated before you uh, left the school committee. So as you know, we started the district capacity project back in um, 2012, November 2012. And it's a labor management initiative um, which is under the Massachusetts Education Partnership. And the lead agency under that is the Rennie Center for Education, Research, and Policy. Uh, many of the districts, the focus of it is that you develop initiatives to address student achievement in the respective districts. Our focus here in Brockton has been to increase the dual language programming um, and we've been building on the successful two-way program at the Mathala George School and the interest of the community. We had done some surveying of the community about three year, two, two to three years ago now. So this is culmination of that. Our current team, um, we're always in flux. We have June Saber McGuire, who's the executive director of elementary education, um, Kim, myself, Kim Gibson, Lori <laughs> Silver has joined us, Yolanda DeFalco, um, who is currently an ESL teacher at the Raymond School, the BEA vice president. Vula Rumis is one of the department heads for the bilingual department. Karen Watkins um, Watts is one of the grants people. Kelly Jones, director of bilingual education. And then we still have our state facilitator, Ray Shirtliff, who's been here before. And he kind of guides us and keeps us on track to make sure we're addressing all the issues that we, we really said we would do back in 2012. Now the, now the reason we uh, chose to focus on dual language programming is based on the extensive research on the um, educational impact on English language learners in particular. And this is just a quick gra uh, graph from the Thomas and Collier study. It is a longitudinal study on um, educational performance for English language learners based on a variety of programming options. And while this one is from 2009, they've recently released a 2014 version which almost mirrors um, the 2009 version. And you can see at the top, the dual language programming, which includes content ESL, is the green performance and they far exceed any other program model for English language learners. And, and for our, our native English speaking community, there is a great benefit of being bilingual. So quick, you have a couple of research um, studies in your packet from last weekend, but research shows that they score up to 25% uh, points higher on their SATs. They perform uh, better on measures of verbal and nonverbal intelligence. They have greater cultural flexibility and sensitivity towards other. They have larger vocabularies, higher developed listening and retention skills. They perform better on tests of reading and math. 
They display more highly developed thinking and executive functioning, so that's managing um, uh, frustration and tasks. Um, they possess skills critical to the national defense. They are prepared better to, um, to contribute to local, state, and national economies. Um, and there has been some recent health benefits um, research out there that there's a decreased rate of Alzheimer's in bilingual um, people, and they actually have a quicker stroke recovery. And we are capitalizing as well. So there's the educational um, benefits for English language learners and native English speaking peers. And we're also capitalizing on a movement nationwide to increase dual language programming. Um, in 2011, there were an estimated 2,000 programs for dual language instruction. And Greg Roberts, who is the um, World Languages and Dual Immersion Specialist for the Utah State of Education, has, has coined the term monolingualism as the illiteracy of the 21st century. And Utah has been a great leader in dual language immersion, and we're going to be working closely with them moving forward. So um, last, last fall, and we updated you at the um, December retreat about a year ago, uh, we wrote a grant for an innovation school planning grant through DESI, and we were awarded it. And so in the spring, we, um, combined, we brought over uh, many district members representing middle and high school and elementary school levels. We had teachers, paraprofessionals, bilingual community facilitators, and school administrators. And um, some of them are actually here tonight to see the outcome of their work. And, and what we did is when we were thinking about moving forward on dual language programming, we broke into four separate groups. One was looking at staffing, schedule, and organizational structure. One was really looking at curriculum. Um, one committee really looked at what support there was in the community and the international connections that could be made. And then one was looking at possible funding sources. So the team recommended um, and, and developed a prospectus for an innovation school. And these are some of the components that they included based on their research and their work. So in programming, they um, propose Portuguese and French immersion programs beginning in kindergarten with an er enrollment via lottery. They wanted to ensure that there was common planning, expanded learning, some community and international partnerships for students and their families. Um, to structure in, in grades two through five, um, an opportunity for newcomers who are newly arrived to our community who already have those target language skills from their home country. And if space allows to enable them to continue that language development while they are acquiring English. And ultimately, hoping to lead to a K to 12 um, sequence leading to a seal of biliteracy. And uh, we are working collaboratively with the foreign language department to start to develop that right now for our um, two-way program. In terms of curriculum inst and instruction, they recommended a 50-50 instructional model. So 50% of their instructional time will be in English and 50% of their instructional time would be in the target language, be that Portuguese or French. Um, they, they recommended utilizing the great work that the Utah Immersion Programs has done. Utah already has immersion programs using a 50-50 model in Portuguese, in uh, French, in German, in Chinese, and in Spanish, with tens of thousands of students participating. Um, they, they recommended having an intercultural, international cultural themes and approaches, assessment of and in both languages, so we can really be teaching towards proficiency in both languages, incorporating ESL for the English language learners, uh, incorporating parent language development in both languages, so our, our families that might need English as a second language support, they would receive it, but also the parents who would like to develop his or her own language skill in that target language. And then um, identifying cultural events, including Skyping, having sister schools, pen pals, and things like that. 
So um, the Community and International Partnership Committee um, did amazing work reaching out to a variety of partners to um, see if they would be willing to support it, and the uh, response was overwhelming. Bridgewater State University has been a partner in this from the beginning. They were part of the, uh, com the committee that wrote the grant and support the planning. So, so they are um, broad um, partners with us on this project. We also, for um, specific content expertise, we, really, we reached out to MATSOL which is the Massachusetts Association of Teachers and Speakers of Other Languages. They are the main professional association, and they were also partners in the planning grant writing process and in the planning process that went on. Um, we, we have DESI up there because um, it is a initiative of the um, Office of English Language Acquisition and Academic Achievement of DESI, which is the bilingual department of DESI, long name for bilingual department, to promote the growth of dual language programming in Massachusetts. So they have been following our work very closely and have um, reached out to us to be partners in that. The, we have the Utah State Department of Education who, who um, enabled us to become a part of this project called the Foreign Language Acquisition Network. Brockton is now a member of FLAN and they, um, they have provided a lot of support in terms of curriculum and materials for a Portuguese immersion program. We also have um, institutional um, partners in our community right here in Massachusetts. The Cape Verdean Association of Brockton, the South Shore Haitians United for Progress, SPACE, which is a support program for adolescent and community engagement, the Brockton Neighborhood Health Center, and Harbor One Bank all wrote letters of support for this project and committed to helping us move forward in offering um, dual language programming and building biliteracy skills to help the community. Um, we also reached out to um, the Consulate Generals of, of uh, Massachusetts and we have letters of support from Brazil and France and Haiti and uh, Quebec on moving forward to support us in implementing a dual language programming here in Brockton. Cape Verde was very, very receptive and they have pledged their support orally. We just don't have that in writing yet and I'm, sh I'm sure they will be active partners with us as we move forward in implementing um, dual language programming. Um, we also have um, business partnerships. These are some of the community, uh, the, the organizations and businesses locally that have seen the value of um, building biliteracy skills for the community and for the business of Brockton. And they have all also reached out and offered um, letters of support. And they have also offered to be partners with, with the um, the, the programs moving forward. So for the fall of 2016, the plan is to actually pilot the Portuguese Immersion Program. Um, community forums we scheduled in the springtime to educate the community on this. Curriculum development and staffing will begin. There will be collaborative planning that will continue from the groups that we previously started under the planning grant. Um, the enrollment would be done by a lottery. There will be two kindergarten classes, one English and one Portuguese, and they will be housed at the Raymond School for the fall. Moving forward from there, in planning for 2017 and beyond, and it's a plan at this point, there would be a grade one of the Portuguese program continuing at the Raymond School with the addition of the kindergarten class of the French immersion program, so the English side and the French, French piece. And then the continuation of the collaboration with the foreign language department to strengthen a K-12 sequence of the programming within the Spanish, Portuguese, and French programs. So that is our plan as of, as of today. Um, so if you, we want to thank you for taking the time, and if you have any questions for us, let us know. Yeah. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to exit. <laughs> exit it, and then I'm going to turn it off. Oh, oh. <laughs> We're really starting for or launching the program in Portuguese at Raymond. Is it kind of the expectation or thought that the, the, um, French and Spanish would also, like they would all exist in the same school? Or 
or like uh, we'd have several schools hosting like a, a language thread. I, I I think the 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 way the prospectus was written was an was to have the languages together to have a real international focus. So so the the prospectus talks about the International School of Brockton. Yeah. However. Um, we there's a lot of building that has to go on before anything like this would happen and there are it, this is this is taking place in the in a greater context about facilities and moving the district forward so i don't think any of us at this time you know c could say ultimately where where what the configuration would look like but it was the 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 um, belief of the of the team that having this collaboration amongst the programs and having it be really focused on dual language proficiency would would assist all of the language strands together. And, and so then the, that same plan would follow in, into middle school presumably. Mm -hmm. Yes. We'd, we'd identify at, at what point kind of that that first cohort makes their way through the system we'd identify in middle school for them right. to exist in and, and then kind of look to expand the other dual language programs. Yes. We currently have the, the Spanish dual language program in the middle school has been for many, many years at the PLUF. And so we're able to um, kind of build on the strengths and the lessons from, from the, the really popular Spanish program to, to plan for a program for the, what like the, for the French and Portuguese programs. Great. sharing that with us. Uh, as far as this strand, so immediately you're looking, or in 2017, you're looking to build one strand grade by grade. So you'll have a full strand yes. um, of one classroom, 25 mm -hmm. students. There will, there will be 50 students. 50. So, so okay. there will be... Oh, because you have two classrooms. Exactly. Okay. Um, down the road, um, how do you see this dual language program um, affecting our like our traditional foreign language programs and our um, and also our um, our uh, dual the um, what is it the um, Spanish yeah the immersion program that we have existing. so so what what I can see it, it happening is actually um, bridging and bringing the foreign language department and the bilingual department even in more close working relationship with mm -hmm. each other. Because right now, um, we have students who come in as English language learners who sp the focus is on, on only mastering English and not thinking about their, their already very important and valued literacy skills that they come in with. Exactly. And so, so um, in the Spanish program, we do have heritage language mm -hmm. programs in Spanish. So for, for students who are coming already speaking Spanish, they have an opportunity in middle and high school to be able to continue that. Right. The hope is, is that we'll be able to replicate that for Portuguese and French. Mm -hmm. So we'll be able to graduate um, students who are who are bilingual and biliterate in multiple languages, which will really be an asset for the the global economy and for getting into institutions of higher education. So I think it'll 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 enable the foreign language and the bilingual department to work in even more closely um, relationship. Well, do you see this as as um, replacing our traditional foreign language options for students down the road? Uh, as we know, when, when we were in school, we took French. I took mm -hmm. two years of French. I don't know any of it today, <laughs> so it really did nothing for me. So by changing the whole concept and the way it's taught um, in a dual language program, do you see that as, as eventually taking the place of the traditional foreign language options? I, I don't think it will take the place. I think it will be another pathway okay. because we can only serve so many students in this program. Mm -hmm. You know, Illinois and, and North Carolina, they're moving only to these dual language programming options for, um, for their linguistically diverse populations. We're not at that place yet in Massachusetts. Okay. So as of right now, we'd, certain students would be able to, to, would be taken, would take advantage of the dual language programming and they would have uh, a level of language proficiency that will far exceed those of the students who are beginning their foreign language instruction Absolutely. in middle school. Absolutely, yeah. So, so it will be a complement and an addition to it, but 
Um, I don't ever foresee us, us um, taking away any of the opportunities for students who are not fortunate so much to be chosen through that lottery. Be put in that program, yeah. yeah, because you can't serve all the all the students. Right. You have to have those traditional programs in place. Exactly. I understand that. So, by one final question, by um, the, through this partnership with the ESA, mm -hmm. does that open us up to more grant opportunities by having that partnership in place? Um, I would hope so. <laughs> um, we, we're, we're in conversation, and I'm going to look at Lori right, a little bit right now. We're in conversation right now with um, um, the state and some of our institutional partners, Matsall and uh, Bridgewater State University, about some grant opportunities. These are highly competitive grants, but we will certainly try to make use of any opportunity that we have. And, and we have been working to, to try to have grants to support the development and the expansion of programs like this. Um, the, the OLA office at DESE is really, um, is, is really strong in its proposition that dual immersion programming is the wave of the future and this is where we need to be, we need to be putting our efforts. Whether or not they will be giving us funds to be able to support that is another is another well, question. Well, once again, Boston is <laughs> at the forefront, so yes. we're leading the way for other communities. So hopefully, we'll be rewarded. I hope that. so too. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the update. I appreciate it. Because in coming on one of the and this is happening in a number of districts, uh, each district really picked their particular project. So Brockton has stayed the course. Uh, this involved collaboration with the school committee, uh, you know, regular updates. Uh, it involved the uh, working with our BEA partners and working with our school administration. So I, I think uh, a lot of compliments for those of you that really stayed the course and have made this a priority. Kim, I thank you. I know it was always a priority with you. <laughs> Kelly and all the group. Uh, June stepped in uh, when it became a little bit difficult for me to attend all of the meetings. I'm updated regularly and I think this will be a real success, you know, certainly in our district and for our families. And I think we've all seen that when we have seen the medical interpretation program here. When I sit here and look at the students graduate and look at the job placements and how they're supporting our community, I think this will really make a difference focusing on these languages that are prevalent in our own community here. If I might close, I will say one of the things that makes Brockton remarkable is that um, we see the diversity of our community as an asset and that they have valuable, valuable skills that can lead um, our community and our state um, and, and the, the, the global in interconnected world that we live in for, towards the future. And, and we're really preparing our kids for the 21st century skills through programs such as this. And there is not a week that goes by that Kelly doesn't send us <laughs> some literature showing that this, in fact, will be a success for our students. She's well researched and we're well informed. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. That's it. Oh, yeah. That's under new business. Nothing to okay. refer to. School committee. So under new business, um, the first item is the ratification of the MOA between the Brockton School Committee and paraprofessionals. I believe Mrs. Joyce, you were the chair of that um, subcommittee. Um, could you tell us who served with you and also just give us a report? I see two, MO, two MOUs. MOA. Yep, MOAs. Get the old one back. <laughs> and Ozzy Jordan and uh, all the hard work they put into this, uh, both sides. We have a lot of staff who stopped with these negotiations with different members coming and going on both sides. But we trudged through and we got through it. And uh, I think we came up with a, a fair, equitable contract that serves the Brockton School District very well, as well as our hard working paraprofessionals. So I would like to make a motion to accept the memorandum of agreement between the Brockton School Committee, the Brockton Education Paraprofessionals Association um, for the time period of September 1st, 2014 to August 31st, 2015.
Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? Okay, second MOA, Mrs. Joyce? Second MOA is also between the Brockton School Committee and the Brockton Education Parent Professional Association, and that will run between September 1st, 2015 to August 31st, 2018. It is a three-year agreement. And did I hear a second? Okay, great. Any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Okay, wonderful. All right. Approval of the December 15, 2015 bid review subcommittee. Is that you, Mrs. Uh, Wilson? Or is that, oh, that's Judy. Okay, Mrs. Sullivan. Okay, Mrs. Sullivan. The bid review, <laughs> thank you. The bid review subcommittee meeting of the Brockton School Committee convened on Tuesday, December 15th at 5.55 in the Rom Little Theater. Mr. Jordan and Mrs. Sullivan were present. After discussion of the FY 2016 refrigeration and air conditioning services bid, which there's three companies that bid on refrigeration and air conditioning, the bid was awarded to Mechanical Air Controls Incorporated, the current company that provides these services for us. A motion was made by Mrs. Sullivan to accept the bid as presented. Mr. Jordan seconded the motion and the vote was unanimous. <coughs> Mrs. Sullivan moved to adjourn. Adjourn. The motion was seconded by Mr. Jordan and the vote was unanimous. The meeting adjourned at 6 p.m. The superintendent recommends the following motions to accept the report of the subcommittee as presented and to recommend the, to the Brockton School Committee to award the following school bid, FY 2016 Refrigeration and Air Conditioning Services bid to Mechanical Air Controls Incorporated. Would you like to the motion to accept that? Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? Okay. <coughs> the next item is the um, December 8th, 2015 Curriculum Subcommittee Report where we, um, uh, that's a committee of the whole. We met over at the R Known Theater at 6.30. We had a very um, detailed presentation by um, Superintendent Smith, Mrs. Barry, Dr. Cancel, Mr. Murray, and Mrs. Saber McGuire about park and what went on and the, um, the differences between, you know, park and MCAS and uh, the successes and the uh, glitches and there was a, um, um, I guess, a tease, a tease from the administration about the results. Um, they wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't they were playing poker with us. They wouldn't show their hand, but um, um, we now heard the good news, obviously. Um, and um, in that presentation was also a request um, that we uh, can basically park. We know park is coming or some version of it. Perhaps it'll be called MCAS 2.0, but the committee basically um, chose to adopt and be um, be a district that um, tested the park um, exam so that we could um, basically have a prelude to what to expect and gave us an opportunity or gives us an opportunity to better prepare and see what the potential ups and downs of that program are. Um, we basically were informed that um, you know something other than MCAS is coming down the pike and um, there was discussion about continuing to maintain the online testing in the current schools that uh, previously participated. So um, that was basically the presentation with respect to PARC. Um, so we need to take um, two items of action. Um, the first is basically a motion um, to maintain the online testing so that we can continue to grow and learn from you know what PARC or MCAS 2.0 will have in store for the district. So. Uh, Andy, could you make the motion uh, to maintain the online testing in the schools that have previously participated in the uh, park testing? Second. Second. Mrs. Second. Joyce. Uh, just a point of clarification for our parents that we will continue to be harmless on the results through 2019, until 2019? At this point, 17. 17. Yeah. So it gives us a couple of years to still work through our own implementation of it, especially the online version of it. 
So that will help us. And we did not have a choice as far as being a park district this spring. For the testing that will go on this spring, we will be a park district. Our option was whether we do paper and pencil in the school or continue uh, online at the five schools we chose last year. Our recommendation is to continue with the five schools that we did the online last year. The other schools will do paper and pencil, but I also want the parents in the community to know that we will continue to integrate technology into the schools. But as far as the testing goes, we will continue to learn from those five schools that took it last year. That's our recommendation, which we have to let the DESE know by December 18th. I'm glad you said that because that was a major consideration in our decision to go forward with PARC because we were going to be held harmless. So it gave us an opportunity to um, you know, roll it out and find out, like we said, the pros and the cons and do so without uh, any detrimental impact on the district. So great. Um, so, uh, it's been seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? All right. Um, and then the second piece of that um, curriculum subcommittee meeting was a discussion um, with respect to the talented and gifted program. Um, there is a, um, there is a uh, subcommittee that was um, formed and they reviewed the um, elements uh, in the testing that's required currently uh, to enter in the, um, the end of third grade you would test, right? It's the end of the third grade, isn't it? Yes. The end of third grade you would have the testing um, and they utilize obviously a number of different um, tools, um, but um, there was a recommendation from the subcommittee um, to discontinue the use of one of the uh, testing uh, tools, which is what, ITBS? ITBS. Um, and um, could you just elaborate a little bit on the ITBS test? or? Is it well, I think it really came down to uh, it's a valuable test, but we already do star testing uh, at that grade level and throughout a number of our grades. And with so much testing going on, we felt that we would get the same results from our STAR testing, which we use for benchmark testing. So in a sense, it would be duplicative. And At this point here, I think it reduces. Okay. We'll get the same results. And there are a number of other uh, assessments that we look at. So there was a recommendation of that subcommittee um, to approve and, uh, and discontinue the use of the ITBS uh, testing tool in the grade three tag selection process. So, um, Mrs. Sullivan, can you make that motion to uh, eliminate the use of the ITBS in grade three tag? Okay, I make, yes. a, I make a motion to eliminate the use of the ITBS test. And replace yeah. it with the star. And replace with the star. And replace it with the star testing. In the, in the tag selection process. In the tag selection process. I'm like I'm like a priest saying the vows, <laughs> you know, like repeat after me. So, um, okay, seconded. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? All right, wonderful. Thank you very much. We're doing a lot of approving tonight for different reports. Okay, um, in closure number 13, I'm very pleased to report that. Um, the superintendent's contract <coughs> subcommittee um, met on Tuesday, December 8th, where there were discussions and the superintendent and the school committee came to a meeting of the minds where uh, the superintendent's contract will be um, extended for another three years at the um, end of her current term, which would be uh, June 30th, 2016. So. It will be another three years from July 1st, 2016. Um, so um, I think that's a very good thing. Uh, it was a unanimous um, uh, discussion and agreement and vote from the uh, members. Um, I think it shows that uh, this is a very uh, high functioning team, school committee and superintendent. Um, the the um, negotiations went very smooth. Um, I think both sides are being very fair to one another. Um, superintendent will receive a modest increase, and I believe it is modest um, uh, in terms of uh, salary and compensation. So um, I would um, recommend that the uh, 
that the committee approved the superintendent's contract that um, was um, negotiated and agreed upon uh, in the December 8, 2015 subcommittee. Uh, any further discussion or comment? Seeing none, all in favor? All right, I think that deserves a round of applause. Okay, let's see. Well, I think there's, we took one thing out of order, didn't we? We did. Okay, um, this is a very bittersweet moment. Um, the recognition of the outgoing school committee members. Um, we, have, uh, we have a large group leaving us. We have five members. Um, and uh, like I said, I think this is a very high functioning school committee. Um, people are diligent, work very hard, take their position uh, seriously, and um, I think offer and bring and have, and have brought a lot to the table. Um, uh, I'm just going to say a few things about each member. Um, Mr. Jordan will be leaving us, and um, he, Mr. Jordan brings a lot of experience with respect to social justice, certainly uh, issues going on with the youth in the city of Brockton. Um, also uh, had a long, and, um, a long and very successful career with the federal government, um, dealt a lot with contracts and negotiations and I just think he brought that perspective and um, we all benefited for it. Um, so how do you want to do this? You want to do one at a time or do you want, why don't you want to do one at a we'll time? Do one at a time. time. Pictures and then hopefully we can get a group Okay, picture. so I would invite Mr. Jordan to please come up. Ozzy, thank you so much for stepping up to the plate. This is a small token of our appreciation for your wall or your office or your desk. Um, go over here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have a small token. I do want to say, as I look out this evening, I see uh, some of the spouses of our school committee members, uh, significant others. I know the time that they have been away. And this is just a small token to thank you for everything you've done for the thank children you. and the community. And thank you to those families that allow you to do that. Thank you very much. Uh, the next person we have is Alicia Jean Clark Wilson. Um, Alicia uh, came onto the school committee with a, uh, a wonderful background in giving and um, participation with respect to special ed um, and special needs students and, and children. Um, she has a very big heart. She has, uh, she's a very successful attorney um, who deals with um, very uh, intricate and detailed uh, issues and um, you um, certainly graciously um, provided us here in the city with um, your skills and especially in negotiations um, with me and the custodians. Um, I thought you um, brought a great perspective and um, I was happy to serve with you. Um, so we want to uh, basically uh, give you something for your, our appreciation for your service. Why don't the guys get roses? What the heck? I'm telling you. You know, it's so sexist around here. It is. I love flowers for the women. Thank you All right. So Thank you, Alicia. Appreciate it. Okay. Next, we have Mr. Henningsen. Uh, Mr. Henningsen is the opposite of uh, the attorneys, and basically he's a numbers person. <laughs> and, um, you know, he, um, he's wonderful with respect to uh, analyzing all of the contracts and numbers, and he um, did a great job raising funds and um, supplies for uh, many of the schools here in Brockton. He um, 
is a busy person, um, uh, you know, a comptroller, a CEO, uh, CFO, I should say, um, and, um, you know, brings a lot to the table and, um, you know, was always generous with his time, um, you know, loved, loves the kids, loves the programs, uh, attends many functions. I see him out and about, you know, at all sorts of uh, events. Um, so we're going to miss him, and we certainly want to express our appreciation. Ray, come on up. No roses for you, Ray. No roses. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the next person I don't understand at all uh, because the next person, in my opinion, I've told him this a hundred times, I don't know why he ever stopped teaching because he loves teaching, he loves education. He, um, he knows all of your edu-speak lingo. Um, well, that's what I call it, edu-speak. They're, t they're talking edu-speak to us. Um, and, um, you know, certainly you know, his coaches all the time, committed to kids. Um, I just see Andy as a, as, you know, as a person in the schools. And I'll never understand why you're not a teacher, but you certainly brought a, a really interesting perspective, uh, experience, and um, you, know, you were certainly a value member of the school committee. Um, and, you know, we're going to miss you, I'm going to miss you. So, um, next, Andy Robinson. Okay, Frosty. <laughs> Oh, good. Here. Oh, right here. Okay, here you go. Tell me. Okay. Spade the love. It doesn't yeah, she does. All right. <laughs> okay, the next person, uh, last but certainly not least, the uh, longest serving member on the school committee to date. Um, amongst this group is Mrs. Patricia Joyce. Uh, I see her husband in the audience. Um, like I said, this is going to be bittersweet. I assume it will be sweet for Greg because he will have you around more um, to... Uh, uh, I don't know about that, but... No, I was going to say to, to, to share your uh, time and your company with um, in a positive way. <laughs> Mrs. Joyce also has an educational background and um, you certainly uh, knew that by the way she could dissect an issue or a presentation. Um, I've served with Patty all my eight years. Uh, this is your tenth year, right? Um, and I think over the years I've gained a respect for her honest analysis. Um, she, you know, asks great questions. She brings a lot to the table. Um, she certainly is extremely intelligent, extremely smart, took her job, her position very seriously, did a great job with respect to the negotiations. Um, we're going to miss your expertise and your assistance with many of these. Uh, well, thank God it's not for another three years now we've got to worry about this thing, um, these items. But um, the, only, uh, the, the only fault I have is that she dragged me into the custodial negotiations. Uh, I had to take her place because of a conflict, so I, I won't hold that against her tonight. But um, um, I think that Patty and I have developed a friendship over the years and um, certainly, like I said, uh, a respect for her intelligence and what she brought to the committee. Um, we are all going to miss her because she really um, asks great questions and, and, and really, you know, gives of herself and um, I think we all learn from many of the uh, issues she raises. So we're going to miss Patty Joyce. But, um, you know, Patty's still here in Brockton and um, I'm sure we will see you at many events and um, I appreciate the time I've spent with you.
she's all yours, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> I will miss you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'm taking her plaque. Patty, I'm taking your plaque. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Get away another two years. I know, I know. So, Judy, no plaque for you, you're staying. <laughs> so, Judy, it's you and me. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't get along with Mrs. Sullivan, there's something wrong with you, you know? <laughs> so, um, okay. Can we just thank Secret Santa? We have these beautiful Christmas stockings filled with goodies I'm happy to share, and we have no idea where they came from. So somebody likes us. Well, that's Secret good. Santa. That's great. All right, well, I think um, are we all set. Is there any further business? Okay, please join us for the concert. That's where we're heading next. So, uh, motion to uh, m excuse me, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Okay. Thank you. Good job.